Hello everybody and welcome once again to the Little Farmer's Farm with me Tony. Now as you can probably hear from the top of the uh, polytunnel, it's raining, it's raining quite heavily today so uh, what I thought that I would do is, um, is harvest, prepare and cook a soup. In fact a 10 veg soup, a super soup made from 10 organic vegetables, nine of which that we've picked directly from our little farm. The only thing that I haven't got that can uh, that, I, that I'm going to be using today is spinach. I've started off the spinach but unfortunately we've, we've used all of our existing spinach so I'm going to be sourcing some spinach that's organic spinach um, from the store but that'll be it. The rest of it, all the other vegetables are going to be brought down to you and cooked up fresh from the field, fresh from the farm. Okay, now I'm just going to get some cauliflower because uh, uh, that's the first ingredient: cauliflower florets and leaves. So let's get let's get on with that. There they are. So I'm going to pull those up. Okay, so there they are. Um, a full head of that is going to be going into the soup, and six of the leaves. Now brassica leaves, which the cauliflower is part of the cruciferous cruciferous vegetable brassica family uh, are edible in fact um, most brassicas all elements are edible you don't just have to eat the florets in the same way that you don't have to eat just the broccoli florets the cauliflower leaves are just as edible I'm going to be taking a couple of leeks so I'll get two decent sized leeks um, for the soup decided to take three of those medium leeks I think that should be uh, that should be sufficient. I'm going to rescue the remainder of the kale, which is the uh, Cabello de Niro kale, or as I call it, the Robert de Niro kale, um, before the slugs and the white fly completely have their way with it. <laughs> Good healthy stuff, though that. And there's the kale. Probably about ten uh, leaves, a bushel of the kale there. There's still a few climbing French beans. Uh, the cobra beans on the plants so I'm gonna get probably about uh, I don't know maybe maybe 20 of those and we'll put those into the soup mix as well add a bit of protein There's some green beans there and a couple of beetroots another edible leaf is the beetroot leaf so these are the beets that were growing in the uh, in the potato bed as a catch crop and there's some nice leaves on there. I'm going to select a few choice leaves, probably about 12 leaves off that. And the same with the chard. We've got Swiss chard down there, rainbow chard. So I'm just going to select a few leaves from there. And they can be added again into the soup. Okay, boys and girls, we're back at the homestead. And I think it's time to make a hearty, nourishing winter soup. 15 vegetables in this, baby. Feast your eyes. So what we've got there is a selection of homegrown vegetables. The only one that's not a homegrown vegetable, I've had to buy it because we've only got the frozen stuff at the moment, is the calabrese. That's an organic calabrese head. We're going to be using half of that. The cauliflowers from the allotment, the green beans, the leeks. We've got the red uh, beet leaf. We've got the Swiss chard. In fact, we've got the rainbow chard there, about five leaves of that. A couple of um, beetroots, carrots, potatoes, which were the Maris Piper potatoes. We're storing those, but I've just uh, rescued three from the storage. Oh, sorry, these ones as well. These are from um, Mushroom Mark, who's a, an organic grower, lives at the other end of Aspel. And he, uh, he does his own mushrooms, grows his own mushrooms. Those are chestnut mushrooms. Chestnut mushrooms, of course, are exposed to light, soak up the vitamin D. So they're a good source of organic vegetable sort of matter, vitamin D, those. So for a vegetarian or, or vegan, they're a good option. Those are our onions. That's one of our garlic. Uh, only a small um, bulb of garlic there that I'm going to be using. We've got the cauliflowers. Le as I say, the leeks, the peas. I didn't film that, but the garden peas are off our plants. We've got um, about 30 gar uh, um, garden pea plants that are still on the go. And that was about 70 pods, 70 or 80, I think, pods I shelled up there. 
quite time consuming, but uh, they are our peas. We've got the green beans at the back. We've got the um, cauliflower leaf, the cabalode and or kale. So all together, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 15 different vegetables are going to be going into this soup that's got to be healthy that's got to be got to be healthy that now as you all know there's nothing better than homegrown organic vegetables there are no herbicides pesticides or insecticides gone anywhere near these vegetables certainly the ones that i've grown and i know mark's mushrooms haven't had anything on them either can't speak for the sainsbury's organic calabrese but I'm guessing it's going to be fine. Um, however, they have been out in the elements and even rainwater can carry pollutants. So we're going to give them a good washing down first in salt water. Sort of lukewarm salt water. All right, so everything's going to get a rinsing off in here. Any bugs that are knocking around, they'll be rinsed and washed off. I'm going to leave them in the salted water for about five minutes. Um, just so that they'll, uh, any, any bugs will rise to the top and um, we can just give them a rinse off then and then they're ready for processing to the next stage but yeah it's just a clean everything's going to get a wash off okay so if you're ever tempted not to salt wash your uh, cauliflowers there's the reason why <laughs> three small slugs that have come out of the cauliflowers organic we'll get rid of them buggers okay so i'm going to just trim off the uh, the leaf from the stalk there the stalks are very uh, cellulous, and they've got a lot of string in them, stringiness within the stalk. You'll find that with all good leafy green vegetables, the heartier the better. They've got a lot of stringiness in them. Now in a soup, you don't particularly want that. You don't want that, want that in the, I don't like it in the dish anyway. I know a lot of people do use the stalks quite extensively, but I don't. I don't, I don't tend to like it. I like it a smoother consistency. So I'm going to be destalking those and just separating them from the leaf. Okay, and I'll do that with all of the um, of the leafy greens that we've got. Okay, so there are good soups and there are quick soups, but apparently there are no good quick soups, according to a French lad I went to college with. I don't know whether he's right or not, but anyway, these are the beet leaves. <clears throat> a quick way of destalking them is to get the stalk, pince and strip you get the leaf off the so pinch strip in pinch strip in all right easy okay so they've been destocked and we've got a good big bushel of leafy greens there three different types the cabalod and hero kale the uh, rainbow chard uh beet leaf and the um cauliflower leaf now what I'm going to do with that is chop it up into sort of like one inch square sections, uh, give it a rough chopping, and then place that in a bowl ready for uh, ready for use later. Now we're doing a beetroot boil up um, because we're going to be canning some of that beetroot um, today as well. Now instead of cooking the beetroots with the rest of the ingredients for the soup, what I am going to be doing is just taking those beetroots, boiling them all up, and then selecting a couple of the beetroots to add into the soup at the end. Okay. When you're cooking up your beets, you're boiling your beets, leave uh, about an inch or two of stalk on and also leave the root on through the cooking process. Give them a thoroughly good salt washing and then a hot water rinse off just to get rid of any soil and dirt that's, that, that remains as much as you possibly can. Uh, and then as you cook them, you boil them, you uh, prevent the bleeding out of the, uh, of the red juices from inside of the beets by leaving the root and the stalk on, a couple of inches of stalk on. Just a little tip for you. Okay, once you've boiled up your beetroot, you can take the base, cut the stem off and the root off, like that. And then what you'll find is, these have been boiling for about 30 minutes and you test them with a knife, you just stab them in the, in the pan with a knife and if they go through nicely and smoothly, then the jobs are good. And the skin, Come straight away like that, peel straight off it, and that's ready, that's prepared and ready for whatever you want to do with it. Pickle it, eat it, whatever.
grate it, add it to a super soup. Okay, so with our fresh leeks, I've just topped and trimmed those, taking the um, any manky outer leaves off and the top leaf growth, and we're just left with sort of like eight or nine inch uh, leeks, medium sized leeks. I am now going to chop those up into sort of half inch um, sections, and uh, they'll be thoroughly rinsed off and left to soak. With leeks, you do tend to um, you do tend to get bits of grit trapped between the layers and the folds of the leek so it's good to, it's good to give them a good rinse in those so we've just taken our beetroots out of the big um, the big pan the big pot and there's about a hundred grams there of, uh, of butter and that's unsalted butter we got it from Smithles Farm when we took the kids there, and uh, it's a nice organic grass-fed butter. So we're just going to let that um, melt down a little bit before we add in the onions and the leeks. Okay, so in go our onions and leeks, chopped leeks. And already the smell from this is, I wish it was smell-o-vision for you boys and girls, because it smells great. So we're going to let those brown off for um, about six or seven minutes, just to release some of the sugars. It's quite a high heat that we're on at the moment in the pan, and uh, we're going to let those sort of sweat off for a few minutes. Five or six minutes, as I said. Oh, sir. Okay, so now I've um, topped and tailed the fine French beans, the climbing beans, and I've also diced up the carrots to about a centimetre. I've just scrubbed the carrots, I've not skinned them um, because a lot of the vitamins remain in the skins. As long as the skins are clean, these organic carrots are going to be fine. Okay, eight minutes later, so into that. We put the uh, the carrots and the beans, difficult to do one-handed, in fact I'll pause that. I'm just basically going to put the carrots and the beans, the chopped beans and carrots into there. Okay, and also the peas. We're just going to cook them off gently for an, another few minutes just to get a bit of a, bit of a coating to them. And then once that's done, we're going to put a pint and a half of water in there, and in the water is, um, is vegetable stock, sort of two packs or two tubes of uh, vegetable stock. We're using the gnaw vegetable stock at the moment. That's the... Okay, so the pint and a half of water with the vegetable stock cubes has gone in and we brought it back up to the boil. So that's taken about another eight minutes, eight to ten minutes really to get it back up to the boil. Now we're going to put in the broccoli and the cauliflower, like so. Now I think I'm going to have another three quarters of a pint, pint of water and another stock cube because it's a big old pan is that and uh, we need more liquid in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that right now and then bring it back up to the boil. All right, so we're up to the boil again and we're going in with the potatoes. In they go. Now they've got plenty of moisture inside them anyway, so no need to add any more water. And it'll be the same when we put the leafy greens in in a bit. Um, they contain a lot of moisture anyway, a lot of, um, a lot of water. So there's no need to add any more. So that's two and a quarter pints of water and the three bouillons of vegetable stock cube that's gone into there. We're going to leave that now to boil away merrily for about another half an hour. So we're up to about an hour of cooking so far. There are good soups and there are quick soups, but there are no good quick soups. Okay, so about 25 minutes has just, uh, has just gone by. I've turned the heat right down. 
to a sort of a simmer and as you can see the potatoes have softened off everything's sort of turning into a mushy consistency yeah now <clears throat> the next step for me will be to add in the greenery we're going to leave the mushrooms and we're going to leave the garlic until last but we're going to put the leafy greens in okay so that's just simmering now I'm going to cover that up leave it for another sort of six minutes before adding in the crushed garlic and mushrooms or probably the mushrooms first actually the reason I'm putting those in so what sort of towards the end is because it's going to be a sort of a immune boosting thing this we want to have as much of the vitamin D retained within the dish as we possibly can and then the garlic of course is a fantastic healthy um, allium to, ad to add in and that's going to be the crushed garlic and towards the end you don't want to overcook cook the garlic because you lose a lot of the um, benefits of the essential oils the sort of volatile, volatile oils within the garlic so we'll be adding those towards the end so as I say another five minutes we're nearly there boys and girls don't worry it's been a long one I know okay so we've just had another 15 minutes on the simmer I've just added a little bit more butter into there probably about another 50 grams of butter you can probably see that as well as the mushrooms and the crushed garlic so three medium sized cloves of crushed garlic have been stirred into there as well all I need to put into that now is a, a bit of seasoning I'm going to put some pepper probably about just a teaspoon of pepper uh, same with the salt because it's had no salt as yet and then uh, some turmeric powder for the anti-inflammatory effects of turmeric probably a tablespoon of that okay so there's a tablespoon of the turmeric which is the yellow stuff you can see there that's getting uh, mixed in now I did add a little bit more water another quarter pint of water as I say it's probably <laughs> around about double really what we usually make this but this should feed about six seven people adults um, I'm also going to add in some freshly crushed black pepper into the mix I've already added a, about a well 20 turns really of the Himalayan rock salt that you can see there the pink Himalayan rock salt so it's had the turmeric the rock salt and the uh, the ground black pepper nothing too tremendous and unexpected into there you can add chili peppers chili flakes into that but um, our family are not big fans I'm not a particularly big fan of chili flakes but you can add some if, add some if you like I think the black pepper is going to be enough for us and the taste will be well sufficient well sufficient 15 different vegetables in there now I'm going to leave that for another five minutes just on the bubble on the simmer and then we're going to blend it up with a hand blender all right last but not least we're going to add a bit of red color that'll probably turn it brown that but uh, there's four small beetroots going in for the beta carotene and all the other great stuff it does for your liver and kidneys okay so just a cheap 10 pound smart price at Asda hand blender we'll continue on until we get that to a sort of a creamy consistency and there we are all we need to add to that is a sprinkle of uh, chopped flat leaf parsley fresh from the garden so technically that's uh, that's vegetable number 16 I suppose isn't it so we'll get that on and some mature some mature cheddar I'm going to mix that in now and have a taste. Mmm. Oh. Okay, it's time for the taste test.
Oh, that's so smooth and creamy. That's beautiful. Oh. So much flavour in that. Really rich, creamy. You can taste a little bit of that pepper. Oh, the texture's the texture's nice too. So yeah. 15 strokes, 16 vegetables in that super soup. Enjoy boys and girls. Nothing healthier. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye bye now.